A wall of steel and concrete 15 kilometers long has just been completed in the middle of the sea. An entire mountain has been flattened and a river moved just to make way for a new airport. These are not future plans. These are facts from 2025. In one of the most transformative years in modern history, a wave of colossal engineering projects are all coming online at the same time, permanently altering our planet's landscape and the way we live. We are about to take you on a tour of the incredible mega projects that are finally finished in 2025. Some changes begin by looking up, way up. In the remote mountains of China's Guizhou province, a ribbon of steel now hangs in the sky. This is the Huajiang Canyon Bridge, and in June 2025, it becomes the highest bridge in the world. The bridge deck floats an incredible 625 meters above the Beipan River. To understand that height, picture two Eiffel Towers stacked one on top of the other, and you would still be looking up at the cars driving across. It is so high that the main challenge for the construction crews was not just heights, but the thin air and unpredictable weather at that altitude. Building here was a constant battle against nature. The canyon is made of karst, a type of limestone famous for being soft and full of hidden caves and cracks, which makes it a terrible foundation for a massive bridge. To create a solid base, engineers had to use a technique called deep pile foundation. They drilled enormous holes over 100 meters deep into the mountainside, past all the weak rock, until they hit solid bedrock. They then filled these holes with reinforced concrete to create massive underground pillars to anchor the two main towers. These towers, standing 262 meters tall, are the pillars holding everything together. They were built using a method called slip forming, where the concrete mold or formwork continuously moves upwards, allowing for a seamless and very strong tower to be built quickly. But the real engineering magic is in the cables. Two main suspension cables, each nearly a meter thick, stretch over 2.8 kilometers across the canyon. Each cable is a bundle of 35,200 individual steel wires each just 5.5 millimeters thick. If you were to unravel the wires from just one of these main cables and lay them end to end, they would stretch from more than 29,000 kilometers, enough to circle almost three quarters of the Earth. These cables carried the entire 80,000 ton weight of the bridge deck. The biggest challenge, however, was the wind. The canyon acts like a natural wind tunnel, creating powerful and unpredictable gusts that could twist the bridge deck like a piece of paper during construction. To fight this, the bridge deck was designed with a special aerodynamic shape, including open gratings that allow winds to pass through, reducing the force. The deck was built in 53 separate steel sections on land. Each 185-ton section was then transported to the edge and carefully slid out along the main cables using a high-tech pulley and winch system, a slow and nerve-wracking process that could only be done on days with low wind. This $1.1 billion project isn't just about breaking records. For the people of Guzhou, it turns a treacherous three-hour mountain drive into a one-minute crossing connecting communities and creating new opportunities in a once isolated region. From this incredible height, we now go deep underground for a project that is changing a city from its very foundations. In the heart of Saudi Arabia, a silent revolution has been unfolding beneath the sand and streets. Fully completed in January 2025, the Riyadh Metro is not just a train system, it's the longest automated driverless network on the planet. Its six lines stretch for 176 kilometers, a distance longer than the entire city of London from east to west, and it serves 85 stations. This required a massive and complex engineering operation, one of the largest public transport projects in history, built in a city that had almost no public transportation before it. The real challenge was building it without shutting down a bustling capital of nearly 8 million people. 
To do this, engineers deployed seven giant tunnel boring machines, or TBMs. These massive cylinders of steel, some with cutting heads over 10 meters in diameter, are basically mobile factories that grind through rock and soil at a rate of about 15 meters per day. As the TBM, nicknamed Jasla or Tharba by the crews, moved forward, it automatically installed the curved, precast concrete segments that formed the tunnel walls behind it. This allowed traffic to continue normally on the streets above. For shallower sections, especially under major roads like King Abdullah Road, they used the cut and cover method. This involved digging a huge trench, building the concrete tunnel box inside it, and then covering it back up to rebuild the road on top, a faster but more disruptive method. In the most difficult, unstable ground or near sensitive historic buildings, they used the new Austrian tunneling method, a slower, more precise process where they dig a short section, immediately spray it with concrete to stabilize the ground, and then repeat. The trains themselves are futuristic. Built by global giants Siemens and Alstom, they run without any human driver, controlled by a central command center using a sophisticated communications-based train control system. This system allows the trains to run closer together, increasing the number of passengers they can carry per hour. Each car is made of lightweight aluminum to save energy and can travel up to 90 kilometers per hour. The interiors are divided into three classes, first class, family class, and single rider class, catering to the local culture. The 85 stations are not just stops, they are architectural landmarks designed by world-famous architects like Zaha Hadid. Their designs are not only beautiful, but also functional, with platforms cooled by massive air conditioning systems to fight the city's intense summer heat, which can reach 50 degrees Celsius. The project cost over $22.5 billion, a huge investment aimed at reducing Riyadh's crippling traffic and pollution. By moving millions of people efficiently, it's a project designed to connect a city. And from connecting a city, we now move to a project connecting two of the world's largest trading partners. Stretching across the Detroit River, a new giant of steel and cable has finally joined hands. The Gordy Howe International Bridge, opening in the fall of 2025, is more than just a crossing. It's a superhighway in the sky built to secure the future of trade between the USA and Canada. This single border crossing is the busiest in North America for truck freight, with over $400 billion in goods passing through each year, representing a quarter of all trade between the two nations. This new bridge is designed to handle much more providing a crucial alternative to the aging Ambassador Bridge nearby. This is a cable-state bridge, which means its deck is held up by cables connected directly to two massive towers. The two towers themselves are giants, soaring 220 meters high, making them among the tallest structures in the entire region. They are constructed from reinforced concrete and have a distinct pylon shape that is both elegant and structurally strong. The bridge deck is a composite structure, featuring a steel frame with precast concrete panels on top, a design that makes it both strong and relatively lightweight. The main span between the two towers is 853 meters, making it the longest cable-stayed bridge in North America. Holding this span up are 216 individual high-strength steel cables. Each one a bundle of smaller steel strands tightly packed inside a protective plastic sheath. These cables are anchored deep within the concrete towers and connect to the edges of the steel deck, transferring the entire load of the bridge and its traffic from the towers to the foundations. But the bridge itself is only one part of this $4.4 billion project. On both the Canadian and American sides, enormous ports of entry have been built. The Canadian port alone covers an area of 53 hectares, which is the size of about 130 football fields. These are not just toll booths, they are high-tech logistics hubs with 36 customs inspection lanes, cargo scanning facilities using X-ray and gamma-ray technology, and new ramps that provide a direct, seamless connection to the major highways on both sides. 
The entire project required moving over 1.6 million cubic meters of Earth, enough to fill 640 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The two main towers were finally connected with the last segment of the bridge deck in the summer of 2024, a major milestone that signaled the end was in sight. This bridge is a physical link between nations, a tool for economic growth. While it connects countries, our next project connects a city to the entire globe. On the coast of India, a mega project has risen from what was once swampy marshland and rolling hills. The Navi Mumbai International Airport, set to begin operations by September 2025, is a stunning example of land transformation. The site chosen was incredibly challenging, a mix of dial flats, mangroves, and small villages. To create the flat ground needed for two massive, parallel runways, engineers had to literally change the landscape. They flattened an entire 90-meter-high hill a process that involved carefully controlled blasting and the removal of over 60 million cubic meters of rock and earth. This material was then used to fill in the low-lying marshy areas, raising the ground level by several meters. Perhaps the biggest civil engineering challenge was diverting the Olway River, which flowed directly through the middle of the site. Instead of simply damming it, which would have caused environmental problems, engineers dug a brand new 3.2 kilometer long channel for the river, safely routing it around the airport's perimeter. This massive earth moving effort created 1160 hectares of usable land for the airport. After five years of construction and the cost of over $2.1 billion, the airport is now 95% complete. Its most striking feature is the terminal building, designed to look like a blooming lotus, India's national flower. This isn't just for beauty. The massive, flowing roof is an engineering marvel, supported by a forest of giant columns. It is designed to bring in huge amounts of natural light through carefully placed skylights, reducing the need for electricity during the day. The layout is all about efficiency with 78 contact gates and a multi-level design that allows passengers to move quickly and intuitively from check-in to their gates. The airport will also feature advanced technology like biometric check-ins and baggage handling systems to speed up the process. When it opens, the airport will immediately be able to handle 20 million passengers a year through its first terminal. But this is just phase one. The full plan is to build four terminals and expand over the coming years until it can handle a massive 90 million passengers annually. This will make it one of the busiest airports in the world, taking huge pressure off the old, overcrowded Mumbai airport. It's a project designed not just to serve a city, but to become a major new international hub for travel and cargo. This modern gateway is designed to welcome the world's people but our next project is designed to welcome them to the world's ancient past. For years, it has stood as a silent giant beside the pyramids of Giza. Now, in 2025, the Grand Egyptian Museum is finally opening its doors to the world. It is the largest archaeological museum on Earth, a nearly $1 billion home for over 100,000 priceless artifacts, including, for the first time, the entire 5,400-piece treasure of King Tutankhamun displayed in one place. Its sheer size is hard to grasp. The main building and its surrounding park cover 50 hectares, an area you could fit the entire country of Vatican City into. The building's design is a work of engineering art. Its front facade is a massive, translucent wall made of alabaster, a special stone that glows when light hits it. This wall stands 600 meters long and 45 meters high. The engineering challenge was to support these thin, fragile panels of stone over such a huge area. The solution was a steel space frame structure, like a giant net, to which the panels are attached. This allows the wall to be both strong and seemingly weightless. During the day, it fills the museum's grand hall with soft, diffused sunlight, protecting the ancient objects from the harsh, direct rays of the desert sun. The engineering behind the scenes is just as impressive. 
A state-of-the-art climate control system, hidden from view, maintains the exact temperature and humidity needed to preserve 5,000-year-old wood, papyrus, and textiles. The museum houses 17 different conservation laboratories, some of the most advanced in the world, where scientists work to restore and protect artifacts. The building itself is also designed to be a fortress for these treasures. It is built on a massive concrete foundation designed to isolate it from ground vibrations and protect it from earthquakes, a known risk in the region. One of the greatest engineering feats was not building the museum, but moving its largest resident. In 2018, the 3,200-year-old, 83-ton statue of Ramesses II was moved from its temporary location to its new home in the museum's grand entrance. The operation took 10 hours and required incredible precision. The statue was carefully placed inside a custom steel cage and transported on two special self-propelled modular transporters that moved at a walking pace of just one kilometer per hour to avoid any damaging vibrations. The museum isn't just a building, it is a time capsule using the most advanced modern engineering to protect the ancient world. And from this monument to history, we traveled to a new monument being built for the future of global trade. On the southern tip of Iraq, where the Shat al-Arab waterway meets the Persian Gulf, a project of historic scale is nearing completion. The Grand Fa Port, with its first phase set to become operational by the end of 2025, is Iraq's ambitious plan to become a central hub in global shipping. At the heart of this project is a truly massive piece of engineering, the world's longest breakwater. This breakwater stretches for nearly 15 kilometers into the sea. Its purpose is to protect the port from the powerful waves and currents of the Gulf, creating a calm harbor for the world's largest container ships. Building it was a monumental task. The core of the structure is made of millions of tons of rock, but the real strength comes from its outer armor. This armor is made of over 100,000 massive interlocking concrete blocks. These are not simple cubes. They are complex, scientifically designed shapes called core locks. Each one weighs between 3 and 12 tons and is shaped to fit together perfectly, creating a single, incredibly strong barrier that absorbs and breaks the force of waves far more effectively than a simple wall. These blocks were manufactured on site in a dedicated factory and then carefully placed one by one using GPS guided cranes to ensure a perfect fit. Beyond the breakwater, the first phase of the $17 billion project includes five new shipping berths and a network of roads. But perhaps the most advanced piece of engineering is the underwater tunnel that will connect the port to the highway system. This will be an immersed tunnel a technique used when the ground is too soft for traditional boring. The tunnel is built from 10 giant, hollow concrete sections, each 125 meters long and weighing as much as 60,000 tons. These sections are built in a dry dock, sealed at both ends, and then floated out into the sea. They are then carefully sunk into a pre-dredged trench on the seabed. Once in place, Giant rubber gaskets on the ends are compressed together to create a waterproof seal, and the water is pumped out, creating a dry, seamless tunnel for trucks and, eventually, trains. This entire port is part of a larger vision called the Road of Development, a planned transport corridor of rail and road that will link the port all the way through Iraq to Turkey and Europe, creating a faster, cheaper trade route that bypasses the Suez Canal. This port is more than concrete and steel. It's a gateway, a strategic move designed to connect Asia with Europe and reshape trade routes for decades to come. Which of these projects do you think will have the biggest impact on the world? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this look into the future of engineering, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next video.